it. You can't be a wokeist without blaming everybody for being racist, and you have to be very intersectional and and victimy. So, and you have to think that the world's a bad place. Yeah, and it's just not hopeful. What world, world do you want to live in? A world where everyone's racist, or do you want to work live in a world where we're trying to come together? Do you think this country is racist? I think there's racism everywhere, but I don't think we're a systemically racist country. I don't see a lot of racism, but then again, I am a straight white male. Let's be really clear about what this is. Let's call it by its name. It's racism. She's a black woman. And she has been it's torn not racism. to pieces. You can't she just... has been torn to pieces. It's not racism. It absolutely is. No, it's is. not. We're the most tolerant, lovely country uh, uh, in Europe. Let's says a celebrate white, our women. It's not man. racism. It's so easy to try the charge of racism at everybody, and it's really starting what to get What worries boring. me about your comment is, you are a white, privileged male who has oh, no experience oh. in I mean, can I just... I can't I... help what I am. I was born like this. It's an immutable so characteristic, you, so, so to call me a white, privileged male is to be racist. You're being racist. You cannot dismiss. Okay, okay. I just... I, I, she was being racist. At the end of the day, she, I didn't raise colour at all or, or anything. And she went, you're a straight white male. And technically, that's racist. If I'd said, if I'd described her in, in her, you know... in You can't say that version. you're black. Yes. So, and I, I just got a, I was really surprised that it created such a drama. But I think it created such a drama because actually the British are very patient. And um, I think we're tired of being told that we're racist by the people that we pay money for and support and, uh, and generally applaud. So it just hurts that little bit extra when you're called a racist on top of it. It's so dangerous, identity politics. There's nothing good about it. It's, you know, even Shami uh, Chakrabarti saying to me, you know, shouldn't it not be a woman? Is, isn't that very disparaging to women to say, well, we must put a woman ahead because she's not as good as a man in some way. So let's, you know, G her up. It's that's extremely patronising well, to women. Jess Phillips in an interview on Sky News oh, yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Like, oof. She, she was asked, you know, they, you know Labour's never had a, le a, a leader who's a woman. All the other political parties have somehow managed it without a all, all women shortlist. But she was asked whether or not a man should stand aside. She said sometimes if you really believe in it, then a man should, you know, hand the mic over effectively. I think, you, it's a, I think it's a great idea if you've got two people that are just there and they're the same level of quality candidate and the support is 50-50, I think why not um, give the woman a chance ahead of the man because she tends to get a less of a chance in this world. But let's not assume that, that we live in a world where women are discriminated against, you everybody is discriminated against by everybody. What sort of society do we want to live in? I want to live in one where we come together, not one that divides us. Which Labour candidate, if any, do you believe can reconnect with lost voters in the North? Who should replace Magic Grandpa? Um, <laughs> Keir Starmer. That's original. That's original. Keir Starmer. <laughs> Keir Starmer gets your vote, would he? And wh why Keir? He just looks like he can take Boris on quite well. Do you know what I mean? That's that's what I get by. You don't think any of the four women would be? Oh, it's not about oh. women. Jeepers, creepers. <laughs> Sorry. So I just was uh, interested in your Let me, let me rewind. Yeah. Any of the women? <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> any woman? Because it's really important what gender you are or sex you are rather than what your policies are and what, how you approach politics. Come on. You, you wouldn't want to be on a, a plane by, with a pilot saying, you know, I got this job for diversity reasons, would you? Well, we have to remember that what they're accusing you of is what they are. And that's why I stand up against them, because they are everything they accuse you of. You think the people who are going around shouting racist at everybody... The, the, wo the wokists, I think, are fundamentally a racist Why bunch, do you yeah. think they are? Because they are racist. They see colour everywhere. They see colour everywhere. It's the everywhere. only thing they see. Yeah, and identity politics is extremely racist as well. I think it's about silencing, silencing opinion. I mean, I've certainly noticed it with me, because I wasn't expecting it to kick off. But yeah. it's like, you're not allowed an opinion, mate. You're white. And it's like, oh, sorry, I've got one, and I'm going to keep shoveling it down your neck. I, I think that it's one of the dangerous things about throwing racism around in this country, which we're doing a lot at the moment, is people become so conscious of it that things like the Manchester uh, grooming scandal get ignored. So that, you know, we need to be careful that we need to call out racism when it's seen, when it's obvious and when it's there, and we should stand together to condemn it. But for fear of sounding racist, there's been a horrific things have happened in Manchester and in towns all over the north of England, and we should be careful and use racism when, when it's there and it's obvious and not a, a call someone racist just because they don't agree with you. It, it's, it's not doing anything but dividing us I, that I see. I think we've got to think, we've got to judge someone on the, uh, the content of their character, not the colour of their skin. I don't think that um, 
anybody, man or woman, is a great going to be a great partner if they see themselves as the victim in a relationship before it's even started, mm. and that they're the victim of some tyrannical patriarchal oppression. I think it's like, okay, bore off. I mean, I just have no interest in it. You need to be with somebody who's lived a real life, suffered hard, and stood back on their feet again. That's what uh, excites me in someone. Not and someone going, it's awful. I mean, obviously, as an actor, you you have to fly I, all carbon, over the place. Yeah, the carbon footprint's huge, but we we make up for it by preaching to everyone how they should change their. <laughs> Fair enough. I've been taking it in the neck for being a posh boy actor who's only got a gig for, because my dad's an actor since the beginning of my career, and I'm like, fair enough. You can have a pop still, at me. I still pay my bills? I still pay my bills and my tax bill. You know, it's like, I don't mind someone taking a pop at me. In actual fact, as someone who likes freedom of speech, continue to take a pop at me. I just lose interest when I get, someone says I want to unload both barrels of a shotgun into your face. The people who were upset by that, who were angry at you, who, who were telling you, you know, you're an affront to womanhood and ethnic minorities yeah. and blah, blah, and you, you don't understand how the world's really like, what would you like to say to them? They're listening to you right now. Trust me, they're listening to this right now. What would you like to say to them? I would like to say that I'm a human being. I'm entitled to an opinion and I'm entitled to express it. And I will respect yours if it's expressed back to me without hatred and venom. And you want to have a conversation with me, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you about anything. That's how we get on in life. Even the snowflakes? Well, the snowflakes will just say you're a white, patriarchal, oppressive, tyrannical male and I can't deal with you because you're so awful. And I'll just go, OK, have a nice day. <laughs> OK.